Okay guys, today we're going to visit Wonderview Tower. Wonderview Tower was advertised as the highest point between Kansas City and Denver. It sits out on an escarpment located just west of what is now known as Genoa. If you look to the west, you can see Pikes Peak, nearly 100 miles away. Looking below, a broad expanse of the big sandy valley covered in short prairie grass. It seems there's no limit on what one could see and as one passerby described here on the top of the world. Railroad workers from Chicago, Kansas, Nebraska, and Colorado Railroad paused on the ridge to take in the view. Below was the railroad that was putting siding on a place called Creech. Creech was named after a Rock Island executive. A boxcar was placed at the west end of the flats for a depot soon after the town was platted out and businesses were established. It's the old filling station here in uh, Genoa. Probably the old uh, hotel or boarding house at one time for the railroad. Converted into a house now. Things look like they were probably 1930s or so. Um, boarded up, abandoned, people have bought it, thorn or stuff in it. I'm going down the street here. Not much in town today. Um, store we're coming up on down here, I believe, is the old uh, grocery store. Creech, however, was not a popular name with the townspeople, and they soon replaced it by naming it Cable. The popularity of Cable was even less attractive. When the townsfolk heard of a railroad worker who was hurt in an accident and was dying, the railroad worker was from Italy and he told his fellow workers he didn't want to die in Cable and that he wanted to go home to his home in Genoa, Italy. To honor the dying man's wishes, the town renamed the town from Cable and changed it to Genoa. The name stuck and has survived over a century. Settlers were moving in and homesteading and the new town of Genoa grew and prospered. A bank, newspaper, grocery store, hotel, blacksmith, boarding houses, hardware, even a moving picture house and gas stations were built. The railroad was busy and the new little town of Genoa was growing at a rapid pace. Early on, the horseless carriage would often struggle or even break down while making the climb to Genoa which in today's standards would barely be called hills. Eventually an entrepreneur set up a shop atop the last hill. Here travelers could pull in for service for their struggling cars and maybe spend some money. A tower was erected that advertised six states could be seen from the top. Genoa was now on the map with its own tourist trap. The world's Wonderview Tower, built in 1926 at the highest point between New Kansas City and Denver. It was a welcome stop to travelers along US 24. Charles W. Gregory, Colorado's equivalent to P.T. Barnum, would stand in the tower and spot license plates of the approaching cars. When the tourists were within earshot, he would boom out state-appropriate greetings through a microphone like, How's things in the Buckeye State? His billboard read, eat, drink, gas, and pop at the tower. Charles W. Gregory died in 1943 and shortly after Interstate 70 bypassed US 24. The tower, however, survived thanks to a large part to its new owners since 1967, Jerry and Esther Chubbuck. They only charged $1 for admission and kept the place up and running. Jerry Chuck Buck passed away on August 4th of 2013. 
The tower has been closed since then. The contents were auctioned off in 2014. However, a preservation group purchased the property in 2016, planning on reopening to the public. Work since then has proceeded into 2018. When I was there, it didn't look like there was too much going on, so um, we'll see if it ever reopens. From a mile away, the Wonderview Tower appears to be bustling. Six dates yelled a hand-painted sign, confirmed by Ripley's. You could see cars in the parking lot and people at the top of the tower trying to identify the advertised six dates. However, once you arrived, you realized that the cars that you saw were just parked cars, and most of them, 50 years old, stuffed with unbleached bottles, their tires buried six inches deep in wind-blown prairie dust, and the people in the tower were just crude fakes. Clumps of red sheet wearing sunglasses were often what the mannequins were made of. The Chub Bucks had stuffed the tower with a mass of spoons, farming implements, and arrowheads much of it nailed and screwed to the ceiling. The Wonderview Tower featured the branding room, petrified room, Indian room, with rock walls painted by Indian princess. They were jammed with what he described as brick and brack. Jerry would often quiz random patrons. He would pick out lucky guests to play the, what he called, guess what? He singled out 10 unusual items, and if you guessed the identity or what the purpose was, you got your dollar back. Items would include things such as rooster eyeglasses and camel nose bells. Just about the only thing that Jerry doesn't have is a postcard of his own attraction. This is a notable flaw in his Wonderview Towers marketing plan, as government did not allow for billboards to be placed near the interstate to help draw in the tourists. Jerry was described as being very upbeat, and his collections of mysterious tools, murky things in jars, and tens of thousands of arrowheads and bottles usually kept the tourists inside the tower for far longer than they planned. No visit to Wonder View is complete without a climb to the top. Flies buzzing through unscreened windows as you ascend the ladders like stairs, six stories of them, past the fake people and even more perplexing exhibits to the observation deck. It's not a climb for the faint-hearted or the flabby, but those who survived were rewarded with an impressive view of eastern Colorado and possibly the air over Nebraska, Kansas, Wyoming, New Mexico, and South Dakota. My visit to Wonderview was awesome. I had a great time and I highly recommend that if you're in the area, stop in and see it, take some pictures and whatnot. They do have no trespassing signs. Um, I did speak to one of the sheriffs and they allowed me to go ahead and at least take photos on the premises. But to get to it, it's on the frontage road of Genoa, Colorado. So you take I-70, exit 371, right there at the town of Genoa. You'll see the tower. You won't have any problems finding it. What I'm going to do, guys, is start making videos more on uh, haunted locations, uh, abandoned locations, places that I drive to that uh, are off the beaten path. I'm going to uh, try and present haunted stories and old, old uh, folk tales about certain areas that I, I go and visit. And then I'll try to, you know, do some investigating and see if I can debunk some of that stuff, too. But it seems to be what you guys like. If you have any ideas or some places you'd like me to go, why well, give me some suggestions down below. I'm always uh, open to traveling to somewhere new and checking stuff out. We've got a lot of cool stuff coming up, and I hope you enjoy it. If so, give me a like, subscribe, and, and tell your friends about me. Anyways, take care. See you in the next one.